where are you on your racing career? Because I did not experience this, but I know some of my close friends have to where, you know, there's just points where you're like, you know, I'm not getting the opportunities I want. What is next? Yeah. And there's not a clear path forward, right? And so in 97-ish, you know, right before you start this Bush team yeah. that I would race with you against, which I thought was a was a great experience for you. We'll talk about that. But um, where are you emotionally with your cup career? Yeah, well, I was pretty aware that there weren't going to be any good opportunities. And so it was more or less I'm going to have to create something if something's going to happen. And, you know, the frustration level is pretty high. Um and it was a real decision, like, am I going to really dig down deep and go after this again, or what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, and so um, just had a lot of encouragement, some friends and different people. And so, you know, got this idea. And, you know, part of part of things that I think I'd have been a much better car owner than driver, <laughs> just looking back, you know, because I, I just have – I really wanted to try to do – maybe it's my intensity level. I wanted to try to uncover every stone. Yeah. You know, I remember – uh, one team asked me to come test the brickyard for them somewhere in, in all this, and it was a, it was a new Who? team. I don't even remember yeah. the name of them now. It was some new team. And we got there, and it was just such a a, a mess. And um, it, it just, I mean, literally to a point where I almost felt unsafe. And so I went back to the room that night, and I took a pad out, and I, I literally just walked step by step what, you know, what happens when you're testing – and what each guy should have his role when the car comes in. You know, one guy's measuring the shock travel, one guy's taking the, doing the jack, one guy's doing the hood, one guy, you know, everybody had his role. And same thing when you're buttoning the car up back to go back out on the racetrack. And as so I, I walked him through all this, because I mean, it was helter skelter. And I went to the crew chief that, that next morning, I'm just trying to help him and said like, like, walk, this is maybe how y'all could run this test and get a lot more out of it. And he looked at that piece of paper and he said, let me tell you something. He said, you worry about driving a race car. And he said, I worry about this team. And he just, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of, you know, you, you run into stuff like that, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. And, uh, when you, you know, but uh, so anyway, going back to the story, um, I, I just had some encouragement from some people. and said, all right, I'm going to go one more try at this Bush thing. And um, Why the know, Bush series? Well, because it was just, a, you know, Cup Series was just, it was going to be, there's no way I could raise the kind of money and, gotcha. just, you know, hire the kind yep. of people. It was just, just I mean, I was, I, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. Sure. So, uh, you know, had seven seven Major League Baseball players or five Major League Baseball players. Mark How did McGuire that happen? Him. How do you get involved with Major, Major League Baseball players? Okay, so you remember Motor Racing Outreach, right? Yep. So in the early days of Motoring Us Racing Outreach, we did our end of the year conference was tied into pro athletes outreach which had baseball and football conferences mm -hmm. so i got to be really good friends with gary gaiety and danny schaefer and we stayed friends uh, for a long time and i went to talk to them about it and they said well i think we can get mark mcguire to put some money in and this guy to put some money in and you know i ended up, get, I ended up getting ted budd who's now a u.s senator put money in uh robin hayes put money in my car you know, so we had a, a, a bunch of car owners everybody put in a little bit of money how much did you own I own like it was like one ninth or one eighth of it. I mean, everybody put in the same amount wow. of money. Yeah, and and I operate it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but we but it was just a fledging operation. I mean, we we really we had some sponsorship, but a little, you know, not a lot. And you know, the year that I finished second to you at Dover, um, yeah, that's really the closest we came to winning a yeah. race. Yeah, y'all led a lot of laps that and, day. And, and um, it was me or you. Yeah, pretty much. And that you day. spun out into the tires, and that's what caused. I think that's what caused the caution. Is that not? Is that the one that calls the actual last caution? You were still Probably. able to come back around. Yeah. You know, we got the next set of tires on. They were just tight. You know, yeah. my, my car just wouldn't turn like it was earlier. Yeah. And you just rode right by me. I'm yeah. like, oh man, I was so I was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you run. You, I remember that car because I was getting into the Xfinity series as a rookie in '98 and, and then in '99. And I remember you yeah. having these moments when there that car was really really good. Yeah. You had some. Yeah. yeah I don't know what your um, overall feeling is about that experience yeah. for you but i thought from my point of sp my perspective it looked like you were having a pretty good time you were driving competitively um having the moments like you had at dover uh you know there were it's, it's always tough for everybody but there it was kind of nice i bet to say you know 
I can, you know, under the right circumstances, I'll, you know, I can do this. Well, yeah, there were some encouraging things that happened. You know, for example, um, we qualified second at Watkins Glen to Borset. Yes. That's a race we should have won. And he kind of, I can't remember, I think I got pushed wide. I don't know if it's him, some, but I lost a few positions. But then I was coming on strong and, you know, really should have won that race. And we had a problem with the engine. So things like that kind of kind of happen. Um, but then what also really happened that was encouraging is uh, we were trying to build our own motors to start with, and that was a nightmare. But we end up, uh, uh, Bill Amick, we end up doing a deal to lease engines from Bill Amick. Mm-hmm. This was kind of like the last year. And also my good friend Lake Speed was retiring, and he came to be team manager. Wow. And I mean, he just turned it around like that. Really? Let me, let me tell you something about Lake Speed. Probably one of the smartest guys that's ever come through cup racing. Really? Ever. He is an, he is so smart. People don't have a clue what how smart this guy yeah. is, how bright he is. Whether you're talking about the chassis, the engine, the anything. You know, he you know, he was he was uh, he held the record for winning the world go kart champion, beat Alon Prost, oh, Ayrton yeah. Senna, all those guys. But anyway, he came in, brought some serious order to my team. I mean, I, I, mean, I was so I mean, you think about it. I was so stressed out, sure. burned Trying out, to do it all. everything, yeah. And, um, and man, we started qualifying good. We started running good. And um, it was just a, like a day late and a dollar short. <laughs> and, 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 and we just ran out of money. Yeah. And, and that was it. I remember yeah. the Rockingham race is probably 99, uh, might have been 98, might, might have been 98. Um, Mark came, Mark McGuire came to the racetrack and you, that's right. Uh, and you had him signing, uh, boxes of baseballs up in the haulers and get, and all of us were able to get one. Yeah. I remember, I remember yeah. going up in there and I still got the baseball that's cool. that day that he signed for me. I was like, Mark McGuire's here because of Bobby Hill and the eight car and they say yeah. he's signing baseballs yeah. if you want one. I was like, damn right. I want one. Where do I go? <laughs> Well, you know, that was a pretty cool thing about that year because as he was chasing the record, yeah. it was we the would same put year. The, the number of home runs he yeah. had on the on the seat post of the car. Yeah. And so that was actually a pretty good little marketing thing that we were doing. And then at the end of the year, he had already broken the record, but we were still going to race at St. Louis. Mm-hmm. So the guy that, that was painting helmets at the time painted this double throwdown cool helmet with Mark McGuire, Roger Maris, and Babe Ruth. Yeah. And – and so he did two of those helmets identical. I raced the one at, at St. Louis and then put it in the case, and he's got the other one in the case. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, so how does that deal come to an end? I know you said you ran out of money, but what, yeah, yeah. get into the the the, 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 meat the nuts of that. and bolts yeah. of it. Yeah, so, well, if you remember me saying we were trying to build the engines earlier in the year, mm-hmm. and we missed a few races. And so our deal with Kleenex was – uh, you know, there's a certain amount of money Pen- penalty. You get penalized for missing a race. So once we were running really good, I could see that you know we had to manage the the sponsorship throughout the rest of the year. So I called the 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 local, not the local, but the rep that was handling everything for Kleenex, and you know just said, hey, I know that I'm gonna owe y'all some money. I'm trying to figure out the budget to finish the team, yeah, to finish the season. Yeah. And he said, look. Man, you're running great. Keep it up. Don't change a thing. You know, we'll figure that out because we're going to negotiate for next year. I said, all right, great. And we go about three more weeks, and we get our next check, and they had deducted everything already. Damn. And I had, you know, this many bills to pay and that much money to pay it with. And I just called them and said, I can't go the next race. I'm, I'm not going to do it because you, you told me this, and that's yeah. not what happened. And – um that was it. That yeah. was that was the very end. Yeah. So oh, I, I went and ran. I went and substituted for uh, in a cup car at Bristol uh, in the Melling team. Yeah. Later that year, but that was it. Yep. Yeah. So um, I know that you, um, for for the most part, you step away from racing in two thousand. I know you came back and and had a couple of one offs in eight in oh eight oh nine. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that was just for fun. Yeah. yeah. So what? How did you deal with? I've, I've, this is a question that's really personal to me because I've, right. I still, I still don't have it figured out, but yeah, yeah. how do you deal with being a, I was in a conversation with Amy last night, my wife, and I'm, I'm like, it's hard for me to realize, it's hard for me to understand that I, I could, I was a race car driver and I raced and I don't know how to not be that. I don't uh, know how to. 
Yeah. I don't know how to I, – I, I race these late model races in an Xfinity race because I don't know how to not. Yeah. You know, when, I, yeah. when, I'm, when I'm raceless for a yeah. year, yeah. I feel less than. I feel, I feel like I don't have a purpose. Right. So how did you manage? Well, first thing I'll tell you is that when all this was going down, I went over and Joe Gibbs gave me a one-on-one probably an hour, hour and a half his time. And I said, you know, here's what's kind of going on. You instigated this conversation? I did. I reached out to him. Okay. And said, so I'd like to sit down and talk to you. And I said, you know, the truth is, it, 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 the last 10 years of my life, it's just killing me that I can't be more competitive. And, it, it, and like, it's just, it's just tearing me apart. And I know I'm not going to have any more opportunities. And at that time, I really wasn't even wanting to admit you know, the physical, the, my neck and all that stuff we talked yeah. about earlier. Um, and I just said, you know, but I, I can't, I don't want to be a quitter. Like, I'm, I'm just worried that I'm going to be labeled a quitter. And am I quitting? You know, you know I don't want to quit and, 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 you know, leave too soon. You know, but the truth is, I remember your granddad, he'd say, every year I raced, put two years on my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I had been in NASCAR for 18 years. So and, and I felt I, I can tell you right now, I felt older mentally, physically than I do today. I'm uh, in better mental, physical, emotional shape today than I did on that day. Yeah. And Joe said, "Look, Bobby, there are so many football players that came in and they had five, six good years, and they they weren't going to be they weren't going to be Hall of Famers, but they had good careers. But they also weren't going to be starting the next year, and they weren't going to be, you know, they were going to maybe make the team, but that was it." He said, I encourage those guys to go on. There's so much life after this to go on and start that life. And that's just what I needed to hear. I feel like God just kind of ordained him to say that to me. And he goes, that's what I need to have the confidence to step away and say, oh, I'm going to go back. And, I mean, literally, you know, praying about what am I going to do. And I remember this company that was going to sponsor us at Daytona one time. They did this a thing called vacuum excavation, which is crazy. I never heard of it. I put the video in. And said, I think there's something to this, to this big study. And I literally go and buy three books at Barnes & Noble's, How to Write a Business Plan. And I'm writing the business plan on my dining room table in Charlotte, North Carolina, before I even moved to Houston. And that was just moving on with my life right then. Right away. Yeah. Huh, yeah, so I'm in it. I'm in and around it all the time. So it's like I want to be in racing, but if – but I got to figure out a way to, to exist in it. Right. Right. And you, right. you're, you walked away and left it. Like, so when you decided that yeah. was, was yeah. your future, you moved to Texas and was in racing as far as from that moment on was not a part of your life. The only thing that was a part of my life was I had a stack of invoices from vendors that, you that I money. kept in my drawer. And when I got the money, I paid them. Yeah. It was a several years later. Right. But some of them I couldn't reach, but some of them I paid. And they're like, I can't believe this. You yeah. know, and paid them back. Yeah. yeah.